This DIY is sponsored by Skillshare. Happy Friday. Welcome to the DIY Designer. I hope you guys are all doing okay. Um, this is like such a crazy time and I know I have people watching from all over the world. I can see that from your comments. So I hope that wherever you guys are, you are safe and you are healthy and you are with your families. I swear it's like the world changed overnight, it feels like. At least that's the case here uh, in America. We are on complete um, shutdown, basically. All schools are closed down, restaurants, bars, gyms, no gatherings. Everyone's just kind of shut down in their own house. Um, you can hear we are recording outside. There's like a chainsaw going on in the background because my kids are off school. They're in the house. We're just basically in our house all day. And so I thought maybe you guys could use uh, a little DIY to lift your spirits. Hopefully just being here will make you feel better. What we are going to do today is uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to turn camo pants into skirts. We're going to make maxi skirts, pencil skirts, and a short little mini. It's just really cute, really on trend. It's a sewing project some fabric scissors, sewing machine, that's really all that you're gonna need. I am insanely appreciative for each and every one of you who have subscribed to the channel and been watching these videos over the last couple of years. It is because of you that I'm still able to um, take care of my family, pay my mortgage, buy food, do all the things that we need to do. And this video is, uh, is doing just that. This one is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and I gotta say, <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's not funny, but it's kind of funny because if there was ever a time that Skillshare is a necessity in life, it is now. When we are stuck in our houses for such a long time. Such a long time. But the good news is that Skillshare has thousands of courses. A new one that I'm really excited about is this podcasting course by the Almost 30 Podcast. That right there, that is Lindsay Simsick. She's actually one of my best friends and the co-host of one of the biggest podcasts in the world. They're going to show you how you can start your very own podcast right now during this downtime. Everything from recording clear, crisp audio, from the microphone to the equipment that you could potentially need, how to position yourself, and very importantly, how to get yourself featured on New and Noteworthy. They have some inside info on what Apple is actually looking for on that home page when it comes to your logo. So I have a link down below. The first 500 of you that click that link are going to get two months free. Pause the video right now, click the link, go to Skillshare, sign up for that two month free membership. If you don't get the two months free, it's still only $10 a month for the yearly subscription. As you guys know, I'm doing the Photoshop course, which has been super, super fun. I highly recommend it. I will link that one below as well if you want to join me on that. Stay safe, take care of yourselves. Um, I will be seeing you back here next Friday. Uh, let's do materials. All right, so let's start off with these camo shorts. Uh, we are just going to open up the inseam. That's actually how we're gonna start every one of these projects is opening the inseam. Now, for those of you that don't know, these scissors are potential samples for scissors I'm producing, which is why there's a tag on them. All right, once you open up the inseam, now you just wanna open up that center front seam. Cut it open straight up until the zipper and then stop. You do not wanna go beyond the zipper. For right now, we're just gonna leave this as is. We will eventually sew it down, but not yet. Flip them over and we're gonna do the same thing to the back. You just wanna cut open that center back seam. And I would say you kinda wanna eyeball this, like you maybe go four or five inches up. Originally, this is the one that I planned on doing high-waisted. I thought I could come up here and sort of take all this out. I'm gonna pin out all of this excess and create a new seam in the back. Sometimes when you're pinning on yourself, it's easy to go backwards like this. All right, so basically just start pulling until it feels like it's nice and snug. This is everything that's gonna get cut off and we're gonna create a new seam. But for right now, you just kinda wanna see how much fabric you're dealing with. The good news is I'm gonna end up with some excess to patch the front. Otherwise, my slit in the front's gonna be, I think, way too open and a little too overly sexual. Anytime you're doing stuff like this, just double check that your pockets feel even. Okay. So now, twist this. See, for some people it might be okay. I'd like to be able to wear this to work. The show that I'm on, that'll be way too high. So I'll add, figure out how to add a little something there, but we just need to sew this down and then create a new seam in the back. Okay, so now it's time to create that new back seam that is perfectly fitted to our body. So you can see what's on the left is my center back seam and what's on the right is my center front seam. I'm taking a crayon because I couldn't find any chalk and I'm basically just drawing a line connecting all my pins together, just creating a nice gradual slope that will become my new seam. 
Double check that all of your existing side seams are even. That way when you create your seam, you don't end up with it being askew. Mine was slightly off, so I took my pins out, I adjusted it slightly, but I'm still using that marking that I gave myself and cutting, giving myself about a one inch seam allowance. So this is my new fit, basically, my new first attempt at it. You're gonna fold it face to face, and we're gonna pin together this new back seam. Now, when I started to pin it, I realized that the uh, belt loops in the back were right in a spot where I'd be sewing through, and it was gonna be too thick. So I just took my fabric scissors, and I cut those two belt loops off, and now I can very easily pin this entire thing straight down the back. Now we're just gonna sew this, giving ourselves about a one inch seam allowance. And you wanna do this on a pretty loose stitch because this is the fitting process. This is when we take one crack at it, try it on and make some adjustments. Now I'm just pinning this down for now so that I can try it on and see if it fits. Pin it down, there's gonna be a natural way that this wants to lay. You can't really tweak it anymore or you're gonna get some puckering. Once it's laying flat, you will sew on top of the existing stitches so that you barely see it. So I tried it on and it it needs a little bit of, this needs to be straightened out. This curve puckers a little bit. So basically at this point, you wanna make sure this is a loose stitch because you're gonna be putting it on and just tweaking it. I can't really tell you exactly how it's gonna be because it's gonna depend on your pants and your fit and your body. But you just wanna use a loose stitch at this beginning phase so you can constantly make tweaks. So I'm gonna do that tweak right now. Basically, I'm just taking it in a little bit more at the waist and then kind of straightening out that curve. This is when you're doing it to your body, obviously. So it's specific to you. Now it was time for me to patch up the front so that it wasn't quite such a high slit. I had those two pieces from what I cut off in the back. And at first I thought, oh, maybe I'll do like one inch on either side and it'll be kind of this cool like quadruple overlap little V at the top. In theory, it was cool. I lined up my hems on the bottoms so that they lined up evenly. But once I got to the top, I was just like, eh, it's a little busy. I've got like a lot of things overlapping, a lot of things happening. And when I tried it on, I didn't like it. So I made a change. I just took one piece and I actually flipped it backwards because it has that really pretty hunter green color. So I flipped it backwards. I lined up my hems again, which are nice because you can see the camo on the hem. And then it goes to that solid green and I just left it on one side. Then. I will stitch in the existing stitch line all the way down on both sides until that front is stitched close and that piece is in. Once that's done, this skirt is done and we can actually move on to our maxi. Now, I decided to turn this into a maxi, although I didn't know it at the beginning. So you'll see in the beginning, I'm kind of trying to figure it out. But basically, as we said before, you just want to cut open your inseam and then cut open the center front seam all the way up until the button placket. You don't want to go beyond that, whether it's a zipper or a button, do not cut beyond it. I did the same thing in the back. I cut up probably about eight inches in the back and now I tried it on. Okay, so for this one, I, my plan was to do, keep it like low waisted and do a mini, which means I'm gonna be cutting through this the pockets. It's totally fine um, if you wanna do that. You basically are just making sure that all this stuff the way that you pinned it is laying flat. I might wanna take in a little bit more in the back here, but for a low-waisted sort of slouchy skirt, it might be fine. That's my length. So if I'm gonna have a raw edge, cut it and machine wash it and let it fray. If not, cut it plus an inch for a hem. The other option is letting it be a pencil skirt and cutting it right here where this seam already is and cutting it right under the pockets. That's just up to you guys and what you wanna do. Open the legs, cut open these parts and then put it on and start playing around with it. Now it turns out that I was able to make this a maxi without actually adding a huge panel in the back, which is really cool. So you can see I have the pins there. I did the exact same thing that I did with the pencil skirt. I put it on and I just pinned out all of my excess. You can see there's a ton of excess coming out of the seat, but then it goes basically down to zero at the very bottom. So what I did is I just took my crayon, you take your chalk and just created a nice, you know, straight line connecting all of my pins together. And then I sewed it, giving myself about a half an inch seam allowance just to be sure. I have yet to cut off all that excess because I just wanna make sure that the fit was right. So you can see right now I'm sewing it and all that excess is still there on the left hand side. I will cut that after the fact. First, I'm gonna try it on and see the fit. Ignore how messy my room is. So overall, the fit of it is actually really good um, and I don't need to add a panel. I really like how straight it is. I feel like it's a little bit more modern than like that 
like those denim skirts that are made out of jeans that end up kind of being A-line. I think the fact that it's like a almost like a long pencil skirt in the camo is actually really chic and very, very cool. I am gonna take a little bit more in in the back, going right to about here and then stop. Make your adjustments, try it on again, then cut off your excess. Don't cut your excess off until you've um, confirmed that it's really the right fit. And then I just have to sew this guy down and I'm done. All right, so I am just doing that final step. I'm finalizing my seam in the back, taking it in just a little bit, and then I will cut off all that excess. And I'm also stitching down the front. I pinned the front when it was on me so that I could guarantee it laid flat. And now we're done, you guys. We're done! Got me feeling. Takes control of